Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Salatu vesselamu ala seyyidina Muhammed ve ala alihi ve sahbihi ve sellem silimen kathiren ve ba'd. Selamu aleyküm ve rahmetullahi ta'ala ve barakatuhu. İnşallah if we can come closer to each other because the angels will surround us inşallah and uh, baraka will descend on us inşallah. Unless you have a condition that you have to lean on the wall, you are excused inşallah. So inshallah, this topic tonight is a topic, it's for myself first. And always I keep it beside me, this topic, for a long time ago. Uh, because it helps you a lot, inshallah. And I want you to teach it to your children, to your loved one. And this topic has to do with one thing, that subhanallah, one uh, scholar, he went to his sheikh, and he said, this life, look, this and that and that. And he told him, you are in one of four situations. You will exist in one of four situations. There is no other option. Either you are in a ni'mah, a blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A ni'mah means Allah gives you something that our nafs likes. So in this situation, what is required from you? Shukr, to be grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Or you are in blessing, or you are in situation when you are tested, a musibah. And in this situation, what is required from you is sabr. Or you are in situation when you are in ibadah, MashaAllah. And this one deserves from you humility and asking Allah for more help. Or you are in state of committing sin, and in this case you have to repent. And subhanAllah, he covered the four quarters. There is nothing else. And I pick the one that really sometimes can bring us down and as I said, this lecture for me always, is, I keep it beside me. I read it once in a while. And this is the second one. In the time of the musibah. And subhanallah, because of my, our positions, every time somebody will call you, I lost loved one. I lost father. I lost mother. I lost uh, a child. I lost sister. My children got diagnosed with this, this, or that, or that. Subhanallah. And this is something that really can bring the person down. And today I give the khutbah at MCC, why people becoming atheists. I told you now we are tackling this topic, the three things that shaitan now is attacking, especially the humanity in general and the Muslim in particular, three things, atheism, and homosexuality and drugs. That is the campaign of the shaitan and his group. And subhanAllah said, one of the things that makes people atheist is this argument, if Allah exists and he is merciful, why he is doing this to us, why he should not stop these problems and all what's going on? And we answer this question many times. And subhanAllah, people, they may deviate. So this topic will help you. Until subhanAllah, if you digest it, and always ask Allah for al -afiyah. never ask Allah to be tested. Ask Allah for al -afiyah. Al -afiyah not to test you. But if you are tested, and you know this, that I'm going to talk about, and you believe in them, inshallah, you will come to understand the position of the prophets and messengers that subhanallah, the musibah becomes ni'mah for them. Because when they see the reward and this and that. So inshallah, we're going to take them as bullets, points. You memorize them inshallah. And I don't know if it's recorded or not. But really, you need to pay attention to that. And number one, so there are a few points that you need to make aware of. And number one, you have to remember the reward of the musibah. And what Allah will give you if you are patient. And really just this one, I could have said it's more than enough. When you know the reward, that's why our scholar used to tell us, Shuyukh, 
the person who really afflicted by a musiba is not the one that he is in this calamity, is the one who lost the reward. Because if you get the reward of the musiba, of the calamity, really you are not tested. You are a winner, as we're going to see, inshallah. So that's the number one, the number one. That's why one uh, pious woman, subhanAllah, something happened to her and she lost her finger. And she was happy. Then they asked her, look, you lost your finger and you are happy and you don't have no problem. Then she said, the reward of it makes me forget the pain of it. The reward of it. But of course, the reward has a condition that you are patient. Patient. As the Prophet وسلم, one time he was passing by and he saw a woman crying at a grave. Maybe she lost her child or something. Then he told her, Oh woman, be patient and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to reward you. Then she told him, Leave me alone. You are not in my situation. She didn't know that he is the Prophet. The Prophet didn't say anything. He left. Okay? Then people gave, went to her and said, do you know the person that you were talking to? She said, no, she said, that's the prophet. Of course, she felt bad. And she left the grave and went after the prophet. He said, no, patience is at the time when you are struck by the calamity. Now, you're going to be patient because of me. When I told you to be patient, be patient. So number one, remember the reward. And subhanallah, my brothers and sisters, any action in Islam, any good deed, is, has a determined reward, except one good deed, that the reward is no account, is the sabr. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إِنَّمَا يُوَفَّ الصَّابِرُونَ أَجْرَهُمْ بِغَيْرِ حِسَابٍ the sabri will have a reward that has no limit. And number two, subhanallah, to kafiru sayyat. It cleans you from your bad deeds. Look, subhanallah, how we see things and how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doing things for us is perception. Some people complain, Ya Allah, why are you choosing me? Why, why, why? Why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is doing all this good for you? And I told them today in the khutbah, why people become atheists? Because they don't know Allah. They don't know who's Allah. And really, if you know Allah, you will never become an atheist. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala introduces himself to us in the surah that is required for you to recite in the, in the salah. Without it, your salah will be invalid if you are imam for yourself or for others. If you don't read that surah, your prayer will be invalid. And this surah is Surah Al-Fatiha. Why? Because Surah Al-Fatiha is the summary of the whole Quran. And number four verse in Al-Fatiha is telling you why Allah created you. Allah created you for what? to worship him. But subhanallah, I hope it catches your attention that before he asking you to worship him, in three verses before, he wants you to know him. You cannot worship somebody that you don't know. That's why many people, they don't enjoy the worship. And that's why I raise a slogan in the community, alhamdulillah, a lot of people now, they adopt it. The more you know him, the more you worship him. The more you know him, the more you love him. The more you know him, the sweeter you worship him. There is a huge difference between worshiping and enjoying the worship. That's why the Sahaba, when they are in the prayer, they don't want to leave it. Why? Because they enjoy it. Why they enjoy it? Because they know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when Allah introduces himself in three ways. And number one, he said, I am Rabbil Alameen. 
Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. And what does it mean, Rabb? Rabb, if you search it in the Arabic language, is the caretaker, the father, this and that and that. Imagine a father that, mashallah, doing everything for his family. He works hard, he takes care of them. Sometimes they are asleep and he's awake and this and that and that. You know all this? And we consider this person a great father. Comparing to Allah is nothing. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, لا تأخذه سنة He doesn't take a nap, he doesn't sleep. Why? Because he's Allah and so that's of course. But what you can teach your children because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he takes care of your affair. 24 hours taking care of you. And the second way he introduces himself is Rahman Rahim. And wallahi this one, understanding this one, you cannot be an atheist. You can't. Because you know that's been Rahman Rahim. Rahman is an expression in Arabic that tells you, according to your understanding as a human being, excessiveness in Rahma. You know your mother, subhanAllah, how she is merciful to you? The Prophet ﷺ, said, Allah is more merciful to you than your mother. So when you know him by these attributes of Rahma, you cannot be an atheist. Because now people are becoming atheists when they see others suffering, and they have that mercy for them. And they say, well, if God exists, he should not do like this. Because look me, I'm having a Rahma for them. And this is ignorance. That's why Prophet Ayyub alayhi salam, he was tested with what? With losing his wealth, his family, and his health. Three, subhanAllah. And after 16, 17 years, 17 years, he made the dua. And the dua of the prophets and messenger, they are lessons for us to learn. What did he say? Rabbi, my Lord. Look, my Lord, as I mentioned, the first attributes, I know you are my Lord. I know you are my care caretaker. I know. And subhanAllah, there are volume just in the meaning of Rabb. Rabb. SubhanAllah. Rabbi. Anni misani al durru. He didn't say, Rabbi, you made me sick. No. Out of respect and etiquettes with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Oh Allah, sickness touches me. Even though we know who made him sick is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But look what he said at the end. وَأَنْتَ أَرْحَبُ الرَّاحِمِينَ And you are the most merciful. So what does it mean? Ya Allah, making me sick, I know you didn't do it to torture me. You didn't do it because you hate me. You didn't do it, you don't like me. I know you are the most merciful. Look, subhanAllah. Even do you know what happened to me? His story, I think, Sheikh Taha covered the Ayyub or not yet, maybe. These are the lessons we take. So the more you know Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala, and also he introduced himself as Maliki. Maliki, this is not my topic. He said, there is a justice coming. Divine justice, but not in this life. So Allah, he said it to you. It's open book. The justice will be served over there until the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Allah will take justice from the sheep with horn to the sheep without horn. Because they hit each other and one has the horn and the other one doesn't have. Allah will take justice from this one to the other one. Even though we know that sheep and so on, they are not accountable, they're gonna turn into dust. So number one, as I said, I want you to remember this and memorize them. Wallahi, this lecture is for me. It helps me in my life. Because as I told you, this life is life full of test. Subhanallah, in the morning you are fine, everything. Afternoon, something happened. As the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, لا يزال البلاء بالمؤمن. Test will be on the believer. In his wealth, in his family, and in his health. Until he walks on the earth and he has no sin. Allah cleans him, cleans him, cleans him. 
So number one, you remember the reward of the Musiba. And number two, it cleans you. And number three, you have to know it's already been decreed on you in the protected tablet. ما أصاب من مصيبة في الأرض ولا في أنفسكم إني مصيبة تهبن on earth or on you in you إلا في كتاب sorry written in the book before fifty thousand years before the creations of heavens and earth you see this knowledge people if they don't have it of course they will become an atheist. But when you have these things and you are servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it's already written. It's there. It will happen whether you like it or not. And the qadar of Allah, I'm trying to give you more information because sometimes shaitan comes from here and here. I try to close the loopholes as much as I can, inshallah. The qadar of Allah has to do with four attributes of Allah. The knowledge of Allah. The Mashiach, the will of Allah, and the Rahma of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and the Qudra of Allah. All these are, mashallah, the knowledge of Allah. We know what does it mean, the power of Allah, the mercy of Allah. And all this four has to do with absolute what? Khair. And I remember what we said when it comes to the actions of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are two. Our actions are four. I want you to understand this. My action as a human being, either I do something good, it will lead to good. I do something bad, I, I do something good, it will lead to bad. I do something bad, it will lead to good. I will do something bad, it will lead to bad. And mashallah, I'm talking to educated people. These are the four options. When it comes to Allah, it's only two in his action. Something good will lead to good. Something bad will lead to good. So uh, that's why the Prophet ﷺ, he was wondering the affairs of the believers. He said, the affairs of the believers are mashallah. Everything is good for him. If he's tested with good, what will happen to him? He will be grateful, and this is good for him. If he's tested with bad, he will be patient, and this is good for him. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he does anything, the outcome is khair. That's why Islam, by the way, just because we are weak, he gave us the exception of three days to mourn, and to be sad. Otherwise, the rule you should not. You should not. Why? Because the outcome is khair. If the outcome is khair, why you have to be sad? Why you have to mourn? Why you have to be angry? But Allah, he knows us, we are weak. Not all of us we can handle. So he gave us up to three days. When he lost a loved one, the Prophet Sallallahu he said, it's forbidden for a woman. Because especially the women suffer more in the loss of a loved one and so on. To mourn on anyone. It might be her father, her uh, brother, her child, her sister, her mother. More than three days. It's haram after three days. And that is the exception I want you to understand. The rule you should not mourn. You should not be sad. Why? Because the outcome of what's happening to you is khair. Why you have to be upset? Why you have to be upset? And you remember what I told you the story last time, if I remember, the woman that she came to Prophet Sulaiman, and she told him, does God exist? Of course, Sulaiman, he knows the question is something else. He says, what are you talking about? I mean, what's your real problem? This is not your real problem. What is your real problem? Because the question is very strange. She said, I'm a single mother. I have children. And I am the breadwinner. And my job is to do the textile. So I go in the market on Sunday. I buy some material. 
bring it home, work on it for the whole week. I take it on Sunday, sell it, make some money, buy some textile, and the rest I spend it on my children and myself. Today, I did what I did, and I put the textile in a bag, I put it on my head, and I'm going to the market, and suddenly a huge bird came and snatched that from me. Something bad. And what does it mean bad for us? Yes, yeah, bad. That is only my way of income and to take my children. Blah, blah, blah. Then he was looking at her. Suddenly, a group of people entered the place of Suleiman, alayhi salam. And he said, O oh, Prophet of Allah, we have some money that we're going to give us charity. He said, what's your story? He said, we are people that they do business. And our method of transportation is in the sea. We have a boat. We take our merchandise, sell it somewhere else, make money, and come. Today we are coming back. And subhanAllah, there is storm and so on. And something happened to our boat. And there is a hole. And water start coming. And we're going to sink. And suddenly a bag was dropped on us. And we put it in the hole, and we were safe. We saved ourselves, Allah saved us. So we went to give some sadaqa. Then Suleiman got the money, and he gave it to the woman. And he told her, woman, Allah is taking care of you in the land and in the sea, and you are accusing him. So the actions of Allah are good. Even in the time of punishment, as we discuss a seminar about it, even when he punishes, is not somebody who wants to revenge. It's like father. He disciplined the child because he loves him. He wants him to come back. Not because he revenged. That's why punishment in Islam, we call it discipline. It's not to revenge from your children. Not even people who are committing crimes in Islam when they are punished, is not to revenge from them. That's why the Prophet said, he prohibited to say something to somebody who's drunk or commit fornication and he's been punished. You cannot say a word to him. That's it. The punishment is there. And you have to have that mercy for them. So number three, as we said, is what? It's written in the book. Alhamdulillah. Done deal. You cannot unscramble the eggs. It's already there. Uh, number four, that you practice what Islam wants you to practice in the time of the musibah. Subhanallah. It's a ibadah. Because many people think ibadah only in the good time. But there is ibadah in the rough time. You are a servant. You are a slave. You worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in both ways. In the time of good, in the time of bad. And what is the ibadah in the time of musibah? Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'oon. Allahumma ajurni fi musibati wa khlufni khayran minha. To Allah we belong and to Allah we shall return. Oh Allah reward me in my musibah and give me something better. Just do these things. Don't use your mind. Oh, how it's going to be better. And subhanAllah, these things happened to one of the wives of the Prophet sallallahu Ummu Salama. Ummu Salama, she was married to Abu Salama, a great companion, great husband. And you know the Sunnah of the, the Sahaba, they used to be with the Prophet وسلم, in the meetings, and they learned something from the Prophet. When they go back home, the first thing they will do is to teach whatever they learned to their wives and their children. Subhanallah, before they ask about anything else, today I learn something. And the wives, they are so happy because they are busy in the house to learn also something. She said, what did you learn? She said, I learned this hadith that the Prophet Sassim, he said, whosoever been struck with a calamity and he made this dua, Allah will give him something better than the calamity that falls upon him. And he teach her the dua. Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'oon. Allahumma ajurni fi musibati wa khlufni khayra minha. 
Allah reward me in my musiba and give me something better. So Musa lama shimu murayz dua. Then what happened? One day Abu Salama passed away. Look, Shaitan, he challenged you and he bring doubts in your mind. Then she made the dua. Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un. Till now it's fine. To Allah we belong and to Allah we shall return. Then the other part of the dua. Oh Allah, reward me in my calamity and give me something better. Then she started asking, who's going to be better than Abu Salama? No one. Abu Salama is the best. Subhanallah. Look, Shaitan. But after a while, she's a companion. She said, no, the Prophet said it. I'm going to follow it. She did it. Who ended up marrying her? The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So just remember, and by the way, this dua is never too late. Even if you forget, you know, most of the time we forget and we complain and this. Once you remember it, you say it. Of course, you need to say Astaghfirullah and repent because you didn't do it on spot. But it's never too late. Even if the years pass by, you can say it and you will see wonder. Something that's been tested and it works. Number five, we are going deeper a little bit. Please pay attention with me. That you have to know that this calamity happened to you because of a sin that you committed. Because no calamity comes without sin. The only people that they can tell is not a sin. It's a test from Allah. And it could be a test, by the way, for you. But always the Muslim is humble. If I accuse myself and say I did something wrong, maybe I don't know what I did. And Allah is punishing me because of what I did. Because that's a sign of humbleness. And that is the attitude of the prophets and messenger. Even though the prophets and messenger, they don't fall in this group. The only people that they can claim 100% that what's happening to us is a test. And what does it mean test? Allah has a place for you with him that you cannot achieve with your good deeds. You can't. Whatever you pray and do, what Allah has for you, you cannot achieve it. Because as I told you, every good deed has a reward. So the reward, the amount of points and good deeds will not take you there. And Allah wants you to be there. So how are you going to get there through the test? That's why Sheikh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah, may Allah be pleased with him, he has beautiful explanation. Amazing this man, how he can pull some things that you, you don't even imagine. He said, while Hussein was killed in that vicious way, you know how Hussein was killed with his family, 70 people in Karbala, in a way that every Muslim will abhor. And may Allah revenge from those who did it to him. He said, why? Then subhanallah, he came up with an argument very beautiful. He said, well, Hussein, he was born in a time where Islam is strong. It's not like his father or other companions of Abu Bakr that they went through a lot in Mecca, torture and this and that. And Al Hussein, Allah has a place for him in Al Jannah. You see, the only way he's going to reach that is through that test. Subhanallah, look. That's why sometimes when some children born or whatever, they are born with a defect or disability or this or that, and we hate it and we don't like it and this and that. I know it's not easy, but if you understand this, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has either for that child a place in al-Jannah that he wants to take to. Or he has a place for his parents. And the story of Surah Al-Kaf, you know, where Al-Khadr killed the boy because the parents, they were good. And Allah has something for them. So they're going to be patient and Allah will give them that. So always remember what happened to you. Maybe something you did wrong. 
Ask Allah for forgiveness. Astaghfirullah, astaghfirullah. And I know you, you learn this from your mothers. At least my mother, I learned a lot from her, even though she doesn't know how to write or read. I still remember when we were young and we drive her crazy. You know what she will say? Well, I till now it rings in my ears. She go by herself somewhere in the house and say, oh, Allah, forgive me. I know I did something wrong. That's why they are acting like this. I said, subhanallah. And wallah, I want you to try this. If your children or family or anybody is giving you a hard time and they're not cooperating with you, instead of blaming, instead of attacking back and so on, just go and sit for five minutes. Repent and ask for forgiveness and you will see what will happen. Most of the time is this. That's why all the prophets and messengers did do this. When everything is not working, they start blaming themselves. Ya yeah, Allah, maybe I did something wrong. Maybe Allah, I did something wrong. Please. And you know the dua of the Prophet Sallallahu when he came back from Ta'if. So here now, for 10 years, he was kicked from Mecca, and he was kicked from Ta'if, and nobody, and this, and he made that beautiful dua, where he says, Ya yeah, Allah, if you are not angry with me, I'm fine. So when you make repentance, and for, ask for forgiveness. And if you know the cause of the sin, go and fix it. Maybe you took the right of somebody. Maybe you harmed somebody. Maybe you treated your parents in a bad way or whatever. And you are suffering the consequences. And when Allah loves you, He discipline you. He doesn't let you like this. Until you come in the day of judgment with a lot of sins. If you do this and still the problems remain, now is the time to be patient, is a test. And the cure of test is to be patient. Alhamdulillah. And you know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has something good for you. If you know it, you will say, oh Allah, always test me. But the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi the Sunnah, he said, ask Allah for al afiyah not to be tested. Uh, Subhanallah, the musibah, this is number six, is a medicine that Allah is giving you to get out of you a sickness that you may have. How many people, subhanallah, they are wealthy and they become arrogant. Then Allah sent the calamity on them that make them humble. Now don't look what you have lost, but look what you have gained, that Allah took away arrogance from you or whatever might be this sickness that you didn't pay attention to it. Uh, number seven, that you know the medicine always, what comes after the medicine, good health. You will be even better after. That's why the musibah sometimes can make you better. Subhanallah. Makes you better. And the Prophet Sallallahu you know what he told us about the companion that he committed adultery and he was punished and so on. What did he say about him? He said, Wallahi, he made a repentance that his repentance, if was divided on the people of Medina. And we are talking, who are the people of Medina? The best generation. He said, it will cover all of them. So sometimes, subhanAllah, a lot of people. And I can tell my brothers and sisters from my experience, I can say that without hesitation. 70 to 80 people of the people now practicing Islam because they went through some problems and Allah brought them back. Wallahi, I know people. That sometimes people used to think about us that this person, he will never pray. So the calamity that brings you to Allah is not a calamity. The real calamity is the one that take you away from Allah. That is the musibah. Anything that brings you to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, really it's good. But these things, I don't say it to everybody because don't go and say this to somebody who just started practicing. No. It's higher level for people, inshallah, like you to understand. And the other one, Number eight, and this is very important. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants you to worship him 
in both situations. If you want to worship him just in the time where everything is good for you, what is the difference between you and the entire humanity? Everybody in the time of good, yes, mashallah. That's why the real spouse is the one that stays with his or her spouse in the time of difficulty. If you are with me just because I'm doing everything, I have everything for you, but once I'm tested, you forsake me. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will test you. وَنَبْلُوكُمْ بِالشَّرِّ وَالْخَيْرِ فِتْنَةِ We're going to keep testing you with good and bad. And we spoke about this many times. This and this. And as I told you, the reward of shukr, because Allah gives you something good, that Allah will increase you in the blessings. The reward of sabr has no limit. And Allah will be with you. إن الله مع الصابرين مع الصابرين. The other one, and this is very important also, and all these things, by the way, I'm using this because, as I said, now the plan is to be ready and try to give immunity to ourselves and our children and community from atheism. Is a wave that is coming now every day. A call. Sheikh, can you help me with what? My son, my daughter. What happened? How old is she? 18. What happened? She started telling me she doesn't believe in these things. And she used to pray. She used to read Quran, make namaz and all this stuff. And not only that, she will say to the mom, mom, I had this problem for two years, three years ago, but I don't want to tell you because I don't want to make you upset. So these things will help you in the argument. Because subhanallah, we teach them the rituals, how to pray, how to fast, how to read the Quran. But we never give them the aqidah. We never teach them this stuff. And that is very, very important. And subhanallah, especially now the programs of atheism, these people, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala take care of them. It's very dangerous. And the doubt... It's easy to throw doubts over there. And people without immunity, they can swallow the bait. So you need these things, inshallah. The other one, you need to know the nature of this life. Allah made it this way. And you can be an atheist if Allah lies to you. But subhanallah, the contract between you and Allah is this book, this Quran. And this book is not like other contracts. You know other contracts, what they do to you? To deceive you and cheat you? How? They put it in fine prints. Wallahi, sometimes I have, I have reading glasses, it's prescription. I cannot read it. It's too small. And you don't read it and you sign. And, if you, uh, and you complain, say, no, it's there. While the Quran is open book with bigger letters, and it's repeated in many surahs that this life is not Jannah. This life is the testing place, not the resting place. Remember this rhyme. This life is the testing place, not the resting place. And you will be tested every day. The resting place is in Jannah. It is what it is. How Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put it? You can blame if Allah didn't tell you, but he said it. And the best people that Allah loves the most went through the same, prophets and messengers. The prophet, look what happened to him. He was given poison. He was invited by a Jewish woman, and she, he, she gave him meat. And she knew that he loved the shoulder and she put a lot of poison in that. And subhanAllah, that's a sound hadith. The companion that he ate, he died immediately. The Prophet didn't die after three years. And he said, it's hurting me. Why he didn't die? The other one died. Because messenger cannot be killed. Remember this in Aqidah. Because Quran said that they used to kill what? 
the prophets. And now I'm telling you, messengers, they don't die. Cannot be killed. Prophets, yes, but not messengers. Because if the messenger is killed, what people will say? Oh, if he stays alive, he could have changed that and did that and do that and do that. Allah doesn't give them that. So he lived and he suffered. And sometimes he go through this, a pain that he said, I know what this pain is from. From the poison. Because the meat talked to him. Said, yeah, O oh Messenger of Allah, I have poison in me. So, look, they, they went through this. And some people, they want to think, uh, uh, no. Well, if you want it free of problem, you are asking for a Jannah. And this is not the time of Jannah. And let me give you this. This is a little bit deeper. Sharia. Sharia, my brothers and sisters. 80% it goes in what we want. In line, good, perfect. 20% is the test in Sharia. I give always example of inheritance. Imagine a father died and he left two brothers. They're going to inherit him. How much are they going to take each one? 50-50. Imagine one of them is rich and the other one is very poor. How much you should take? 50-50. So this one is a test for the poor. Are you going to accept the Sharia or complain? Oh, you are rich. So what? What? I'm okay. What's the, what's the problem with that? Allah give it to me. So in many areas, this 20% where the test is. And that's what takes you to Al-Jannah or to hell, not the 80%. Because the 80% goes for you. It's fine. But this, I just give this example because other example, because I don't have time, that's not my topic. So we have to know that this place is not the resting place. Over there. That's why if Allah said there is no day of judgment, I can understand. If somebody to become atheist because there is injustice and nothing happening, yes, you have an argument. But when Allah speaks about the day of judgment more than any pillars of Iman, the pillar that's being discussed a lot in the Quran, even though as I said many times, Quran is not a book of details, is the day of judgment. And whenever the Prophet wants to fix something in the companions or among the Muslims, what he will say? Whosoever believe in Allah in the day of judgment. Let him be kind to his neighbor. Let him speak good or keep quiet. So understanding this, that's why some people, they, they don't want to cope even in what we call the natural things. They complain about the heat. They complain about the cold. They complain about the rain. They complain about when it's not raining. You are not in Al-Jannah. You are in the dunya. Allah has three places. Remember this. Three places Allah has. One, 100% free of problem. Not only free of problem, free of ibadah. You don't worship anymore. And this place called Jannah. And there is another place, 100% problem. And this is called hell. How we go to those places? We have to be in a place where it's mixed. And you decide where you want to go. As one sheikh said, the dunya is like the airport. You know in the airport? You have everybody in the airport. But what is different among them? What is different? Each one is going to different destination. But the airport gathered them together. So we are here in this airport. The good and the bad. I'm insisting on this point because it solves a lot of problems. Sometimes just you know what is the problem of the person and you give him the medicine, inshallah. Uh, the other number 10, you have to know that you are a property of Allah. You are a property. 
You don't belong to yourself that you have a say, you have a word. You are called Abd. Abd. And one of the things that can help you is to read about the history of slavery in this country. Master, yes, master, you master, man. Whatever he works, nothing belongs to him. You are Abd. You are Milkun Lillah. That's why the dua of the calamity is what? Inna Lillah. We belong to Allah. We are owned by Allah. And the master has the right to do whatever he wants in his property. That's why, subhanallah, uh, Umm Salam, I think, again, she has a baby that she was, he was very sick. And the father used to love him so much. And whenever he comes back from work, Abu Talha, yeah, maybe Abu Talha, but also I think Ummu Salama. I, I will investigate that, inshallah. Zakallahu khairan. So she will ask him, he will ask her, how is the baby doing? Doing fine, alhamdulillah. He will look at him. That's... So one day he went and the child died. Then he came, he asked her, how is he doing? He said, today he is doing much better. He is resting. So, of course, he understands something else. And she prepared herself, mashallah. And that night, they have the halal interaction and so on. Then in the morning, she told him, if somebody left, left a trust with you, and one day he said, please, can you give my trust back? What are you going to do? He said, I will give it to him. I said, well, Allah took his trust. Your, da, your son died. Pastor. Look what she said. Subhanallah. Allah took his property. That was your problem. وَمَا الْمَالُ وَالْأَهْلُونَ إِلَّا وَدَائِعُ Our wealth and our family, they are just trust in our hands. وَلَا بُدَّ يَوْمًا أَن تُرَدَّ الْوَدَائِعُ And one day, the trust needs to be given back. Yourself. You are trust. That's why you start with yourself. إِنَّا لِلَّهِ That's why when you give condolences to somebody who lost their loved one, what do you say? لِلَّهِ مَا أَعْطَى لِلَّهِ مَا أَخَدْ وَلَهُ مَا أَعْطَى To Allah belongs what He gave. And to Allah belongs what he takes. Look, subhanAllah, this iman. And I have seen people in the cemetery jumping in the grave, crying, why? Why you took this from me? Why? Why? Why? Okay. Now you, did, you are not bringing him back. But yes, you commit more sin and you made God angry with you and you lost the reward and all this for what? Ignorance. The other one, which is beautiful, that the believer always he has hope that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will solve his problem. Al yaqeenu bil faraj. Subhanallah. Wallahi, my brothers and sisters, I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not to test any one of us. But if you are tested and you understand what I'm talking about, Wallahi, this journey waiting for Solution to your problem becomes Jannah. Jannah. Because you develop a relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You become closer to Him. Closer. And always you ask, you ask, you ask. That's why the stories of the prophets, these are the lessons that He's given us. Prophet Yaqub. Imagine, some scholars said He lost him for 40 years. And some scholars say 20 but he never lost hope. And subhanallah, until you forget your problem and you concentrate on that intimate relationship between you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is how you see things. Then you see Allah. Sometimes, uh, that's why some people confuse when you read the story of some people where he said, I wish Allah didn't take my problem away. Not because he wants the problem, no. But because the problem put him in a state 
of closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Intidar al-Faraj is one of the greatest ibadah. And that's what, mashallah, this hope. And you remember what I told you. If you want to define iman in one word, iman. If somebody asks you what does it mean, iman, you can tell him in one word, one thing. Iman equal hope. That's it. So if there is no hope, what? There is no iman. Very simple equation. Where is the proof? The Quran. When Yaqub, he asked his children, go and look for Yusuf and his brother and do not despair from the hope of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. إِنَّهُ لَا يَيْأَسُ مِنْ رَوْحِ اللَّهِ إِلَّا الْقَوْمُ الْكَافِرُونَ Only the kuffar that they lose hope. As long as you are alive and this, there is hope. There is hope. And you know stories, mashallah. This is number 11. So we have 16. Uh, subhanallah. وَلَرُبَّنَا زِلَةٍ يَضِيقُ بِهَا الْفَتَى ضَرْعًا وَعِنْضَ اللَّهِ مِنْهَا الْمَخْرَجِ ضَاقَتْ فَلَمَّا اسْتَحْكَمَتْ حَلَقَاتُهَا فُرِجَتْ وَكُنْتُ أَظُنُّ أَنَّهَا لَا تُفْرَجُ يعني سبحان الله sometimes it's got die, die, die, die until you see that's it like now in the situation of the ummah wherever you look it seems there is no light at the end of the tunnel. Wherever. Subhanallah, myself, a long time ago, we used to work for three causes. Only three causes that we raise money for. Kashmir, Afghanistan, and Palestine. That's it. Now, subhanallah, the whole ummah, wherever you throw your zakat, just take your zakat and throw it, it will fall in the right place. Look, subhanallah. Be sure that the hope is close. It's there. And the faraj, Allah will find a way, it's close. And that's, if the iman doesn't give you this, it really is not the right iman. Call it culture, call it whatever you want. Why? Where do you get the iman from? From believing in Allah. You remember what I said in the beginning, the more you know him, the more you trust him. The more you know him, the more you rely on him. The more you know him, the more, the more, the more. That's why he said in Hadith, I think I'm going to stop here. That's why he said in Hadith, and this Hadith is very, very serious Hadith. It put the ball in your court. And it's Hadith Qudusi. Allah says, I am at the opinion or how my servant think about me. Allah will give you what you think about him. If you think about him, Allah will help me. Allah will solve my problem. Allah, Allah, Allah will give it to you. If you believe, no, I don't think so, this, look, and that, Allah said, okay. We are waiting until you change your belief and your perception about me. I think we, maybe we stopped here. We have others. Let me say, say them without explaining them. Number 12, ask Allah for help. Dua, subhanallah. That's why people who are in good situation, you find them really raising their hand. Like, I don't need you, Allah. We need Allah in both situations. Then number 12, 13, read the story of the people of Sabr that they went through. And at the top of them, prophets and messengers. And mashallah. Uh, and the greatest musibah that you need to remember, your greatest musibah and my greatest musibah, musibah is the calamity ever is the death of the Prophet He said it in Hadith, sound Hadith. If you have a musibah, remember your musibah in me, 
because his death is a musibah. Imagine the Prophet is with us now. Subhanallah. Look how many confusions among the Muslims. What is right? What is wrong? Alhamdulillah, we have him. That's it. Whatever he says. And this is sound hadith. There is no musibah for the believer more than the death of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Of course, this hadith is not going to be understood about people who don't. By real believers. That's why the Sahaba, you know what happened to them when the Prophet died. And number 15, and this is a good one. If you want to forget all what I say, just keep this. Alhamdulillah, your musibah is not in your deen. The real musibah is the musibah of the deen. You know, people, they cry and we sympathize with somebody who lost a loved one or he lost a job or he's been uh, persecuted or put in prison without this. You know the greatest musibah? Somebody who doesn't pray? Wallahi, this one, the musibah that he has is more than everything else. Because the musibah, the calamity in your world, in your family, and in yourself, and you are patient, it will take you to Al-Jannah. The musibah of the deen will take you to hell. That's why our dua, Allahumma la tajal musibatana fi dinina. Oh Allah, do not make our musibah in our deen. Does not mean we wish the musibah in our dunya. Or, no. But at least our deen, ya Allah. Because the deen will fix everything else. If you have the deen, the musibah in the family, in the health, in the wealth, the deen will fix it. And that's what I'm doing. The deen. I'm telling you the deen. What the deen telling you to do with the musibah. And the last one. That subhanallah. That the believer, he will see the musibah only in this dunya. In al-akhirah, Allah will gather him with his loved one. Forever. There is no more death. There is no more separation. There is no more that and that and that. Allah will gather them in Jannah. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Number one, to give us al-afiyah. Ask Allah al-afiyah. What does mean al-afiyah? Not to test you. Because the Prophet ﷺ said, إِذَا سَأَلْتُمُ اللَّهِ فَاسْأَلُوا الْعَافِيَةِ If you ask Allah one thing, ask Him al-'afiyah. Al-'afiyah means not to test you in your world, because the test is not easy. And number two, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us among shakirin when we are blessed. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us among sabirin when we are tested. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to reward us for every musibah that we went through. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us in the past when we didn't handle our musibah the way Islam wants. May Allah forgive us. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, in a few days, we're going to start the new year, 1443. Subhanallah, another year passed by fast. May Allah make it the best year in our life. And may Allah make it a blessed year for all of us and for the ummah, inshallah, everywhere. And may Allah forgive us for the sins and uh, wrongdoings that we did in the last year and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala extend our life until inshallah we do what pleases Allah Zakumullah khair assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh Hajj Umar Allah Akbar 
أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حي على صلاة
الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله هيا للصلاة هيا للصلاة قد قامت صلاة قد قامت صلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله استهو استهو اعتدل طراس الله اكبر الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين نعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين وإذ قال إبراهيم رب اجعل هذا البلد آمنا واجنبني وبني أن نعبد الأصنام رب إنهن أضلن كثيرا من الناس فمن تبعني فإنه مني ومن عصاني فإنك غفور رحيم ربنا إني أسكنت من ذريتي بواد غير ذي زرع عند بيتك المحرم ربنا ليقيم الصلاة فاجعل أفئدة من الناس تهوي إليهم وارزقهم من الثمرات لعلهم يشكرون ربنا إنك تعلم ما نخفي وما نعلن وما يخفى على الله من شيء في الأرض ولا في السماء الحمد لله الذي واب لي على الكبر إسماعيل وإسحاق إن ربي لسميع الدعاء رب اجعلني مقيم الصلاة ومن ذريتي ربنا وتقبل دعاء ربنا اغفر لي ولوالدي وللمؤمنين يوم يقوم الحساب الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر كبر. الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم 
صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين رب اجعلني مقيم الصلاة ومن ذريتي ربنا وتقبل دعاء ربنا اغفر لي ولوالدي وللمؤمنين يوم يقوم الحساب ولا تحسبن الله غافلا عما يعمل الظالمون إنما يؤخرهم ليوم تشخص فيه الأبصار مطعين مقنعي رؤوسهم لا يرتد إليهم طرفهم وأفئدتهم هواء وأنذر الناس يوم يأتيهم العذاب فيقول الذين ظلموا ربنا أخرنا إلى أجل قريب نجب دعوتك ونتبع الرسل أولم تكونوا أقسمتم من قبل ما لكم من زوال وسكنتم في مساكن الذين ظلموا أنفسهم وتبين لكم كيف فعلنا بهم وضربنا لكم الأمثال وقد مكروا مكرهم وعند الله مكرهم وإن كان مكرهم لتزول منه الجبال الله سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر مالك يوم الدين إياك الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر 
الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر السلام عليكم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله استغفر الله استغفر الله استغفر الله 